Watch, watch this block. Look, and it doesn't stop there. Wow. I mean, you, you just knew that this was going to happen. And that's that's all on Crabtree right there. And then, of course, Tlaib, he retaliates. And then you've got Lyman in there. And this is just out of control. And now the, the officials are going to try and decipher what happened. Wow. They both took a look at that. Yep. And the official, I think the first Oh, thing, he got inside the yeah. grill of Tlaib. Boom. They start playing football on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving football has become a time-honored American tradition. Classic rivalries being played out on football fields all across this great land, from local high schools to enormous NFL stadiums. Win or lose, everyone gets to go home and enjoy their turkey with loved ones. But in 2012, we had a Thanksgiving game that would leave a horrible taste in our mouths as we watched our proud national tradition degenerate into an unrecognizable clown fest. This is the worst Thanksgiving game. Thursday, November 22nd, the year of our Lord, 2,000 years and 12 more, 8.20 p.m., MetLife Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. The New England Patriots visit the New York Jets. This is the Jets' first home game since Hurricane Sandy slammed the Northeast less than a month before. Up to this point, 2012 has been a whirlwind year. LeBron James wins his first ring. The NFL referee lockout ends after three weeks of, let's call it, subpar officiating. Disney purchases Lucasfilm from George Lucas for $4 billion. Star Wars movies forever. Uh, more did you say? Barack Obama is re-elected president of the United States. Colin Kaepernick makes his first career start for the 49ers, relegating Alex Smith to the bench. Hey, and there's 2012's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. We got all the classics, Charlie Brown, Spider-Man, and truly awful lip syncing. The Pats, led by Giselle Bündchen's husband, come into the game missing a few key players, including Rob Gronkowski, who broke his arm four days earlier on an extra point attempt. But they're still in great shape at 7-3, while the rest of their AFC East rivals sit at 4-6, which, yes, includes the Jets, led by Rex Ryan and Mark Sanchez, playing out the string of yet another lost season. Silver lining, though, as proof of Ryan's unwavering love for his QB, he now has a tattoo of his wife wearing nothing but a Sanchez jersey. Totally normal. Oh my goodness. First quarter, the game starts slowly with both teams trading three and outs before the game's first big play to Aaron Hernandez sets the Pats up just outside the red zone. Still isn't close enough for this Steven Goskowski field goal attempt that sails wide left. Fortunately, they were playing against Mark Sanchez, though, who promptly gave it right back with this pick. The Pats work their way to the doorstep of the goal line as the curtain closes on a scoreless first quarter. What could top this excitement? By the way, during the broadcast, we get a trailer for the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 2, which is dominating theaters everywhere, closing out a very important film franchise about teenagers falling dangerously in love with vampire wolves or something. Don't worry, there will be plenty of unsexy dystopian young adult fiction for your embarrassing aunt to fawn over in the very near future. Moving on to the second quarter, Wes Welker finds the end zone on the first play, and after the Jets methodically work their way downfield, a fourth down fumble ruins their drive. And the game just torpedoes from there. Brady immediately targets Shane Vereen with Bart Scott in, let's call it, coverage, and he's got nothing but large swaths of open field in front of him. No one is catching him. Surely the Jets would take a deep breath and compose themselves, right? Oh, no. Two plays later, this recently very good professional football team executed the most beautifully stupid play in the history of organized football. A truly perfect storm of athletic incompetence. The butt fumble. Sanchez takes the snap, turns to hand off to no one, and inexplicably decides the best way to salvage the play is to sprint directly into the derriere of right guard Brandon Moore. If the play just ended right there, we're still talking comedy gold, but end there, it did not. No, no. To make this a truly masterful play, let's have Sanchez not only cough up the ball, but let's have Steve Gregory pick it up and stroll into the end zone. And now we have a chant for Tim Tebow, who, mind you, has some broken ribs at the time. That's right, Timothy the Chosen Son Tebow is being called for by an angry crowd. But this is the worst Thanksgiving game ever, so if you think the lunacy ends there, well, 
think again. On the ensuing kickoff, Devin McCourty forces another fumble. Julian Edelman grabs it, runs it into the end zone, capping a four-play sequence featuring two jet fumbles and three Patriot touchdowns. This game turns from a scoreless bore to a 28 to nothing runaway blowout in the blink of an eye. The window where there were both points and competitiveness was basically non-existent. This game is so bad, Jets superfan Fireman Ed leaves the game. So anyway, the Jets get the ball back, do nothing, punt, and after Julian Edelman gets loose for another touchdown, the Jets kick a pathetic meaningless field goal to put them on the board at the end of the half. The score is 35-3. Now it's halftime, so let's run through the day's earlier NFL happenings. While you were trying to enjoy dry turkey and cranberry sauce from a can, there were two games earlier in the day actually worth watching. Rex's brother was getting lit up by rookie RG3 in a shootout in Dallas, while the Texans eked out a win in Detroit, and Lions head coach Jim Schwartz illegally throwing a challenge flag on a long touchdown, which meant a bad call couldn't be overturned. On to the second half. Not much happens in the third quarter. This Stephen Ridley chop block in the end zone provides the safety, which is a prerequisite for any truly shitty football game, while this Bilal Powell touchdown amounted to little more than putting lipstick on a pig. Aww. At this point, the audience of a broadcast which began with over 24 million viewers dropped below 15 million by 10 p.m. You could always go over to Fox for Glee. In this episode, Jake and Ryder get into a fight, then become friends again. Everyone sings. Man, those little f***ers love to sing. So, with no mercy rule in place, the fourth quarter has to be played and probably only has an audience of loyal family members and masochists. The Pats score two meaningless touchdowns, the Jets score one meaningless touchdown, and we even get to have Ryan Mallett waking up in time to kneel away the final seconds of this 49-19 worst Thanksgiving game ever. So the holiday season ends before it even really starts, when all the Black Friday idiots wait in line to get the Wii U and Furby toy, <laughs> Jet superfan Fireman Ed quits forever, Doesn't seem the same without Fireman Ed, it's really, really depressing, Johnny Football wins the Heisman, Johnny Manziel, Monsters Inc. 3D is released because 3D movies are awesome. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style reaches an unprecedented milestone of 1 billion views on YouTube, setting into motion the apocalyptic events our Mayan forebears predicted for the end of the world. So now that it's all over, we can look back and realize that some traditions just aren't worth the time. Blindly following along to old, outdated customs will only get you disappointed or worse. So go do something with your life before it's too late. <laughs> what an episode of the worst. Butt fumbles are funny. If you have an idea for an episode of The Worst, put it down in the comments. And remember, subscribe to SB Nation.